think I'm perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Which is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm perfect. Perfect. Yo, yo, Doc D here, and in this Fruity Loop tutorial, I'll show you all how you can take your Fruity Loop memory from 2 gigabytes of RAM to 3 gigabytes of RAM. That is your allocated memory that's been given to your programs by your operating system. And in this particular case, I'm going to show you all guys very quickly. I am running um, Windows XP Service Pack 3 2002 Edition. And as you can see here, guys, it has been allocated four gigabytes of RAM. So I have a four gigabyte RAM chip inside the desktop box. So make sure you guys have that because we're going to be increasing our Fruity Loop to run three gigabytes of allocated memory to the program. So first things first, guys, precautions. What you need to know about this first before you get started, you need to have used CMD before because most of the coding is very similar to CMD. And the second thing is uh, you need a Windows repair disk just in case your computer doesn't boot up. And the boot file that runs the computer that starts the computer on boot up needs to be repaired in case something goes wrong. But y'all will Google that. I will not go through that with y'all. You guys need to find that out on your own because this tutorial is just dedicated to showing y'all how to increase your FL Studio memory to three gigabytes of RAM. And I'm using Fruity Loop 10.09, but this could also work with Fruity Loops 11. They quite similar, actually. The programs are pretty much the same. So this is Fruity Loops, right, guys? And what you need to know is that um, the very first thing you should know is that when you go to the top, you're gonna go to your memory usage, right click, and you're gonna go to from show used to show available, because that's how we know whether the memory um, has been actually increased or not and what the current memory is. So that's what we're trying to figure out here. And what the first thing you need to know is that, guys, we're going to go to our Fruit Loop help panel and that's where it can show us how to increase uh, the amount of allocated space. You can do this in two ways. You can go to your help tool menu and you can go to help index that will take you there or you can be like me and you can press F1 and that will take you to the help FL Studio reference menu. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the third booklet and you're going to select part two of part four and you go to that will take you to CPU and memory panel. Then you're going to scroll all the way down till you reach the bottom. You will find highlighted here Windows XP 32 bit, which we're going to be using a 32 three gigabyte switch. Sorry. And we're going to increase by three gigabytes of RAM. And the file that we're going to modify is the boot ini file. And that's what we're going to be doing, guys. So now that we see what we need to do, we're going to minimize all of this. And we're going to go to the boot ini file to configure it so that we can increase our food chip memory. The very first thing you're going to do is when you're going to go over to my computer, which we opened before, and we're going to unhide hidden files because that's where the boot any file is located so what you're going to do is you're going to go to your 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 menu your tool menu and you're going to go to view and you're going to go to show hidden files and folders then you're going to go into your local drive mine is c in this case yours might be something else and there we have it boot.ini file and this is one of the ways that you can get to the boot any file and not, it might not work for everyone as their boot and it might be located somewhere else. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm just going to quickly hide this again. I'm going to show you guys how to access the boot any file in another way that isn't this way, that everyone should have access to the boot any file. So you're going to go to view system information, you're going to go to settings, startup and recovery, and then over at edit, you're going to click edit and, and this allows you to edit the boot any file. And as you can see here, we have the exact same thing as what we opened up earlier on. And this is exactly what we're doing, guys, where we're accessing the boot any file and we're going to have to save it afterwards. But right before that, guys, we're going to save a backup of this. Note that this is number one. 
it's it's in quotations one and that's what it's actually called that's the partition that we always use to start windows that's what its string name is and that's what's used to actually start in this operating system now what we're going to do is we're going to save an original this original boot ini file in case something happens so what we're going to do is we're going to save as and we're going to we're going to label it as boot original and what we're going to say is um what we're going to do is we're going to actually save this over to our desktop and what you could do is you could um send it to your flash drive so that just in case something happens you can always go back and overwrite or edit art out using this and restore our boot back to the way it used to start up through your operating system now this is the boot ini file now we're going to edit the same boot ini file but this time when we edit it this is the one that the computer is actually going to use so in case we stuff up we can still go back to our boot original backup in order to save us from any malfunction startups okay so what you're going to do this is how we increase the fruity loop allocated memory guys to 3 gigabytes of ram you're going to take the last line you're going to copy it you're going to go to the next line and you're going to paste it you can do this with control v that's what i use and then you're going to take this one here this is what your computer is going to be called for example yours might be called microsoft windows xp professional this is what yours might be called it might be called something else i'm not sure what yours yours might be but i'm just giving you an example so this string doesn't really matter at all cuz this is what shows up when you when you boot the operating system now in this case um this the one that i'm using here i will highlight it to be my own computer's operating system which in this case is microsoft windows xp service pack 3 and at the end i'm going to put i'm going to put 3 gigabytes of ram because i need to know that when i enter in this operating system it's the one that i've actually increased and allocated the memory to the programs then what i'm going to do is here instead of adding backslash you go, you're going to add forward slash this is what you should do remember that microsoft windows xp that's what you're going to name your own computer i just named that because it's my operating system here you're going to type the exact same thing i'm typing so forward slash 3 gigabytes forward slash again and fast detect now instead of saving as you're going to go to save guys or you can do this pressing control s so you've got two ways of of saving and that's how you are able to increase your fruity loop 10 or 11 to 3 gigabytes of ram guys now you can exit and close everything guys and now what we're going to do is uh i'm going to switch off the computer and i won't be able to show you guys any of this because um it's on the boot start up so i can't show you how it looks but i will show you pictures of it i'll show you how the pictures look guys all right and as you can see here guys this is the this is picture number 1 and this is picture number 2 as you can see i have selected part number 2 to go into the system now i will shut down and when i come back i'll show you how it looks okay guys now we're back again and now to prove to you all that fruity loops has actually increases fl studio memory then now i'm going to enter into fruity loops i'm going to do this by entering a new project and i'm going to show you to very quickly you go up to the part where it says um your memory usage and notice 2975 megabytes guys which is basically 3000 megabytes rounded off and you can even double check that by going to show used to show available again and it still shows the same thing guys and we have done it we have increased our fruity loop memory guys Isn't that great? Now you can build more complex projects and add in even more VSTs. What it do whatever you want to do. You can take this to the next level, guys. And now as you can see, that is how the switch works. Now I'd like to show you. Let's just say for instance you don't want the a 3 gigabyte of RAM increase. You want the computer to turn to the original state. You don't want this on your Fruity Loops anymore. 
okay, cool, guys. It's pretty much the same thing that we did all along. You go to my computer. You go to view system information again. You're going to go all the way down to the advanced tab. You're going to go to settings. You're going to go to edit. You're going to just take the last line, guys, and you're going to just remove it. Then you're going to press control S to save it. And that's how you turn the computer back to the default settings so that it, when it boots up, it doesn't show you the two options. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys learned something new. If you like the video, you learned something new, please subscribe, like, and comment and tell me what you guys think. It's been a long tutorial, but I hope you all liked it and learned something. I think I'm perfect. 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 It's just perfect. 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 I'm perfect. Perfect.